Howdy, it is I, Junk, back again. Not very soon, but I'm, I'm back. Hey, let's just accept it. I'm back, okay? And, wow, what? I didn't want to record tonight, but uh, so much has transpired with the petition drama. I felt like I should at least talk about it a little bit. Uh, where to begin? Let's start with a recap. And I'm sorry, the visuals are not going to be very elaborate for this part, so if you want to tune out until the game starts... Totally understand, but I'll go through this as quickly as I can, but there's a lot to get through. So, about a month before the petition was supposed to launch, Manny gets suspended for saying DGEMs are like Bitcoin and for promoting Mecarina, right? And so for about a month, he's negotiating with Pixonic, and according to Manny, he thinks they're going to work something out and get back together, right? In this time period, Predator approaches Manny with a petition idea, and they coordinate with at least a dozen, and I get the impression it was more than that, other content creators in a Discord channel to assemble this petition. Predator says they did it this way so that no creators would be singled out as not participating, because if they didn't include as many people as possible, the outgroups would be blamed by the community. And the creators, including Predator, including Manny, mutually agree to launch the petition on a Thursday. On the Wednesday before that Thursday, Pixonic announces to the creators that Manny is banned from the mentor program and the creator program, but doesn't say why. <laughs> Some creators leave the Discord immediately, others stay but want to delay the petition until a future time when they can figure out if they're going to get banned. And both Predator and Manny agree this timing is awfully convenient and probably calculated to divide the community. Now, Manny says that some creators asked their Pixonic contact about the petition and whether it was okay to go forward with it. And the message those creators got was, quote, I would advise against it. <laughs> Which is, how, isn't that like, like magnificently sinister? I would advise against it. <laughs> nice channel you got here. Be ashamed if something happened to it. So Manny tells the other creators, do what you want, but I'm going live with a video at the pre-agreed upon time of Thursday morning. Everyone else, Predator included, is hanging back until they can understand what happened to Manny. Now, this might be a point of dispute. Manny says at that time he told the other creators his ban had nothing to do with the petition. It's not clear. To me, it's not clear if Manny did say that, why there was confusion, but I wasn't there. So, uh, Manny goes forward and publishes a video saying, hey, the creator community worked on this together, but at the last minute, everyone else backed out. The day after that, Manny posts a video about being kicked out of the content creator program and mentor program, but in the video, he does clearly say it's not about the petition. Okay. So in the month after that, people have been leaving hate, for lack of a better word, hate comments, uh, telling those other creators if they didn't endorse the petition or if they said nothing, that they left Manny out to dry and, and they turned their back on the community. And... My impression is the big creators who everyone knew had to be involved probably got the worst of it, especially Predator, Adrian, AD Gaming, you know, the big guys. Then on a couple of live streams, Manny made statements that seemed to reinforce the narrative that other creators had backed out from the petition and suggested they were putting their interests in front of their audience's interests. That upsets Predator, so he makes a video calling out Manny for the whole situation and accusing Manny, in short of making negative videos for hate clicks to maximize his money and saying, you know, that's essentially why he came back after quitting anyway was, was for money. So he decided to maximize it by having, you know, hate title after hate title. Manny makes a response video where he tells some more pieces of this story. He apologizes kind of for the live stream comments and he calls out Predator for, and again, I'm going to paraphrase this, basically posting and hiding a video that said champion robot champion league robot diversity is improving or really legend league robot diversity is improving essentially accusing predator of being a shill for pixonic so manny kept emphasizing I'm, I'm always honest with you but predator is out here carrying water for pixonic and so he's justifiably getting comments from from an antagonized player base so then predator makes another response video where he points out manny's version of the story does gloss over some big pieces uh the big one is being that, you know, Manny didn't necessarily go forward, forward with the petition out of a sense of justice. He was just the only content creator who had nothing to lose because he was already kicked out of the program. <laughs> Everybody else had some apprehension and wanted to understand 
what the risks were, and for, for, for many, the stakes couldn't be lower because he had lost everything there was to lose by going forward. Um, so there's some points of disagreement in these stories. That's basically like the recap of everything we think we know, at least as told by, by Manny and Predator. So what are the actual points of disagreement in these stories? One is, was there a reason to wait on the petition? Like, why didn't Manny just wait when everybody else wanted to wait? Manny says he didn't wait because if they didn't launch at the pre-agreed time, they never would because the creators took so long to find that time. And Predator's response was that it took time to coordinate across time zones, but they'd never postponed the time before, so there's no basis for thinking postponing it would be a problem. That's a factual question, and I don't know the truth because I wasn't in the room. I can't say Manny's wrong because I wasn't there, and maybe if I was, I'd agreed with him. But that said, I don't really understand, under the totality of circumstances, why they couldn't wait 24 or 48 hours to hold the coalition together. And even if Manny's right, like, even if Manny was right that this was the only way to get it done because it wasn't going to get done if they postponed it, it makes it logical Predator would feel thrown under the bus when those hate comments came his way. Um, so the personal accusations, does Manny farm hate clicks? I, I don't think so. And I'll tell you why. This is, a, this is a, weird, a weird kind of defense, but if you watch Manny's streams, he can get very salty. And as, as, as the king of Toxic Mountain myself, I'm not blaming him for that. <laughs> I don't think Manny is faking his frustration in video themes, titles, or thumbnails. I think, if anything, Manny is faking the good mood. <laughs> the real Manny is the one who has, who has toxic thumbnails. Um, but then to, to extrapolate that to the larger claim that Predator is making that Manny is farming hate clicks, no, I, I absolutely do not think that. Manny's done everything short of buying 2.5 million copies of Armored Core and distributing it to us to convince us not to love war robots. I think the hate is real. I don't think he's faking the hate for clicks. So... Then to Manny's accusation, does Predator carry water for Pixonic? No, I think that was a weak claim from a wounded Manny. Predator is just a less negative guy than average, and he feels it's his duty to point out good things when they're there. Like, Predator is just, Predator gets frustrated, but like, Predator's frustration is non-toxic, right? Like, it's not, <laughs> and, and you know what I mean, like, you, you understand what I'm saying. Like, he gets frustrated, but it's not like, he gets frustrated and, and says things that you wouldn't say to anybody in life, in actual life, right? That's not, that's not toxic. That's just regular frustration. And I think he's basically a positive guy. Um, like, I think we all aspire to point out good things when they're there. And Predator being basically positive is just more likely to see it. There was a subtle-ish rib that Predator made to Manny in the last video where he said Manny hasn't been in a squad game in two years. And what Predator was saying without quite saying it was that Manny wouldn't know what goes on in Legend League because you can't solo queue to Legend League. I mean, shoot, I don't know what goes on in Legend League because I, I, play, I play squad, but not enough to do that. Like, I, play, I don't play enough squad to do that because it's amazing how unenthusiastic your clan mates can be to, to play with you when you want to have a golem in your lineup. <laughs> which is fair, which is fair. Like the one time I remember, I, I, I got some interesting feedback the one time I forgot what I had in the hangar and, and came to high-level Champion League squad play running a Bulgasari. Uh, they, they gave me time to, to, uh, to remove it before the next game. So, uh, but anyway, Predator's point in this video was talking about Legend League and High Champion League. Legend League, if you don't know, it's the top 100 players in each platform. So in other words, it's the top 100 players on iOS and the top 100 people who bought hacks on Android, PC, and Amazon. Like, <laughs> There's going to be Android players who are salty about that, but the truth is, you know that I'm exaggerating, but not by that much. Anyway, Predator's point, in short, was that the Legend League generally picks what's most effective, and the greater diversity of bots in that league indicates more things are effective, which means balance, while not necessarily good, is improving. And that's all he was trying to say. And it's easy, by the way, for Manny to throw the stone that other people are shills for Pixonic when he got kicked out of the I shill for Pixonic program. Everybody's a shell for Pixonic compared to Manny. Like, what does it even mean if Manny thinks you're a Pixonic shell? If you're not trying to actively burn the place down, Manny says you're, you're a shell, right? <laughs> like, like, no, everybody's a, everybody is, is more friendly to Pixonic than Manny, who has, has in every way telegraphed his desire to never hear their name again. So anyway, what, big takeaways here. I feel like everybody, what everybody wants to hear is we should all get along, and this is just drama we shouldn't care about, and I don't necessarily... I, I, I try to look for the lessons in things, and I think disagreement can be healthy, and passion can be healthy, and we don't need to agree with each other, we need to learn from each other. So one thing I learned from this fight is that for many years we wanted the big content creators to stand up for us, like we wanted them to band together and make a statement, and we've seen how easily Pixonic 
was able to pull the rug out from under them and break the whole effort apart. Anyway, now Predator has a petition too. So let's do Predator's petition. I'll link it. Let's do Manny's. Let's do Pixonic's forums. Let's do everybody's ideas. More effort isn't bad, you know? It's always the last thing you try, right? So let's try it all. So yeah, that's my thoughts on what's going on right now. And hopefully there isn't a whole lot more to say about it. <laughs> let's get into some gameplay. This is a game where you watch me trying a robot for the first time where I just utterly fail to use it properly. And instead I have to fall back on other robots, but it's a game that starts out as a five versus six in, in about 10 seconds turns into a four versus six when I think somebody rage quit. I've been, half of the teams I've been on have been down at least one player in the last two days. I'm not kidding. And I'm not exaggerating. Like fully half of the time I don't get a full team. So the only saving grace is because it's still qualification week, I don't necessarily need a full team. And so we're going to take a look at what a four versus six looks like. Let's get to it. Okay, we are here on the trash plant, so you know I'm already not in the world's best mood. Let's drop in the ultimate now. June just leveled it. Don't know how to play it, as you're going to find out very quickly. We have the uh, stock build with the two Calamity on top. We've got two nuke amps, one anti-control. That's the Kestrel drone. And my friend Fishy Boy, shout out to Fishy Boy, uh, has told me that the Kestrel is hitting three times on the Ajun and the Emuji. Nobody knows if it's as intended or a bug. Uh, it's not going to matter because I'm going to misplay this bot so badly that it's not going to have any effect. I stay in hiding good. I come out of hiding good. I take out a robot good. And then I decide I'm going to go land on their home. Bad. This was like first day playing war robots kind of move. This is a bot that needs to stay in cover. At least the way I built it with the two nuke amps. If I want to build a tank version, and you know I love tanks, I could have done that, but I didn't build it. And so I get my double kill on the Orochi, but I very... Oh, on the Ophion, sorry. But I very quickly get taken out. So, his friend Ultimate Fenrir comes in. There's a Nucleon Weather Chicken that gets taken out. This is the Hazard Leech gets taken out, and the Brizant Lynx. And the Brizant Lynx, you should watch this Lynx. He goes into his ability, shoots at me, then ducks behind the building until, until he comes out on the other side. Get a shot by the, by the Hawk's weapon there. Then he comes on the other side and shoots me again. This is really smart and I hate him for it because he's put me in a position where I got two options. I can go after him or I can keep the beacon. And well, you know, I wasn't born yesterday, so I keep the beacon. But that means he's going to get to bob and shoot at me as much as he wants to. Triple kill there, take out a hawk and go figure. As soon as I shoot at him, he goes into his ability. I try to get a little cover here and put some fire on that emoji that was using the same hit and run tactics. And there's a second hawk. Was there a Ceylon hawks? I guess there was. Brazant Lynx gets a little bit brave, a little bit froggy. I see there's an Eiffel over there doing something, and I'm looking at the at the beacon bar, and I realize it's it's four on six. Like, at the most players we have, active is four. Okay. So I'm in the trash plant, and we're down two players. Yeah, I'm really not in a great mood. M meanwhile, as I'm having these thoughts, I'm just eating damage, and it just doesn't really matter a whole lot, because this is the ultimate Fenrir, and these are not the world's highest damaging bots. So I'm just, yeah, whatever. Uh, Erebus comes out and looks like it has Frutals and what is that on top? Is that a Viper? Well, it's gone now. Let's uh, see if we can take out our second Hawk of the morning. Yep. And in comes the first Titan that's engaged me and it's a kid. It's qualification week, folks. We're going to see some weird things, right? Like, we're going to see some people uh, challenging different levels of, uh, or ch challenging different leagues. The Ultimate Avengers and Ultimate Punishers, the Ultimate Avenger and Ultimate Punisher take care of that. Kraken Indra with a hybrid build it too, and then the most astonishing hybrid I've ever seen on this Erebus, Decay, Zeus, and Goss. Ooh, the struggle for, for F2P is real, man. Uh, so finally, with the help of the Indra and the undefeated Brazant Lynx, I get taken down. But now stuff's about to get really serious because it's time for some Flame Eiffel. And just because you had a player advantage, I hope you don't think that it's going to save you now because things get real when the Eiffel comes out. And I, I move really quickly because when I get hit in the back of the head with snowballs, I think I'm getting hit by Titan 
frost rockets, and I turn around, and it's a Glacier Lynx. So he successfully trolled me into shooting him in, instead of the Brizant Lynx that I really want to take out, because he's been very annoying to me. A triple kill there on the Amuji that was hitting me before. Back up here to get what I think is another Lynx. No, no, that looks like it was a Typhon. I didn't even see him. A Flame Typhon lost the Flame War. And here's an interesting moment with this, this second squid. The Kraken Indra coming towards me. You always wonder... At what point does courage, you know, become a mistake? And I think it was at the point where he got within 200 yards and realized that these flames hurt a lot. <laughs> Thought he could take me out there. I just land and I think, oh, is this, a, is this a safe place to land? It is not. Suddenly, surprise luchador, the two worst words in the, in the English language, surprise luchador. Uh, getting chased down there by the Kepri for the Beyond Godlike. Luchador jumps towards me, but he had used his shield before when I went up. So I was able to toast him up for the Titan Slayer, and how like how am I getting shot by a third hawk? And this was a Papa Mobile, so there isn't a sale. This was this, somebody's been sitting on this for a while. Oh, uh, okay. Now we've got a Sonic Fenrir, and this is the guy who was in the Brizant Lynx who was outplaying me around this building before. But this is a matchup he was not destined to win. Another living legend. I guess that was, was that two living legends or three? I don't know. He drops in to save his home beacon in the Ravana. Getting help from a Kepri and an Ocho, which just means that as soon as I fly up into the air, this is just popcorn chicken for, for this build, man. They, they may be very strong bots on the ground, but when you're in the air with five flamethrowers, it's just popcorn. You just hit them until the kernel pops. Uh, the Thor mothership was able to take the shield off of that Ophion. And at this point now, I think the player advantage has shifted. So I'm looking around. Well, there's only one beacon we don't have. Let's go after it. Get another living legend on the way. And then I think, well, eh, there's this Ravana. Why don't we just avoid him being a problem? Or another living legend. I, I've officially I don't have any idea how many living legends we have at this point. It's it's a lot. It's more than it's more than a regular amount. There's like a standard amount of living legends one might get, and this is higher than that. Slow down by the gravity amp, go up in the air for what is apparently the last player in the Ocho Kochi. In the Okie Doki. Can we just make that the official name you can venture from now on? For what is probably the last living legend of the game. And I don't think I'm going to have time to even cap this beacon because the game is over. <laughs> so, effectively down two players in the trash plant. How did we do? 15 million, one assist. Who would I be assisting? 15 million, one assist, 25 kills, and three beacons captured. So, yeah, that was okay. Clearly, I mean, what did we learn today? We learned that Flame Eiffel is still the meta. We've learned that Qualification Week has some strange effects, and we've learned that if you get rid of two players on the team, that just gives you a lot more leeway to get kills. 25 is, I think, my personal record. I think before this, 23 was. And it's this tends to happen. I think other people have noticed this too. Like, you tend to hit personal kill records when you're down players because if they're not getting kills and that just opens up more opportunity for you to get kills and that was my experience so if you've made it to the end of the video thank you for making it to the end of the video if you're a dog or cat at home alone i'm sure you're a good puppy or kitty and your parents are going to bring you a treat really soon i will talk to you again soon later